I was on the spot. I love that. I wish I had just like three more minutes. This video is sponsored by Keen. What's good, T Tribe? Tiana T. Yeah, that's me, and I'm back again with a different type of video. So, you heard about Keen, Keen this, Keen that, all your favorite spiritual gurus and got a sponsorship or a partnership with Keen. <laughs> me too. But is Keen legit? Is Keen really worth all the money, the time, the effort it takes to get a reading? That I really don't know. But I'm gonna find out. So, if y'all follow me from TikTok, you guys know how opinionated I am. You know how honest I am. You know how cutthroat I am. So, I'm gonna keep the same energy when it comes to this reading. So, I'm gonna get my reading. Then I'll come here and tell you my thoughts and my opinions and how I feel exactly about the reading. I'm going to give it to y'all straight. No chaser. And being transparent, I have to let you guys know my incentive to you in regards to my partnership with King. So basically what we're offering you is if you use my link down in my bio down below, you'll get your first 10 minutes for the reading for $1.99. That's like up to $99 in savings. Because if you try to go get a reading without my coupon code, you will quickly see how high that price is and I'm saving you a ton of money. Let me break down a reading for you. If you guys were to get your own reading, you don't have to get an astrology reading. You can get any type of reading. You can get a tarot reading. You can get a love reading. You can get a clairvoyant reading. You can get a past life reading. You can get a reading for your pets. The same reading I'm getting right now, you can get for $4 instead of the 99 price, whatever the price is going to be. So I'm saving you a ton of money. It's risk-free. You get the clarity and insight from like so many different people on the spot. You don't have to wait two weeks, three weeks, a month out. You know how some people are so booked and busy. You'll get a reading from advisors that are ready to give you a reading like right there, then and now. So with that being said, I'm not gonna hold you guys up any longer. Let's get straight into the video. Okay, so right now you guys see my balance. I have a $50 balance. And what I did, so I'm gonna get an astrology reading. The thing about astrology readings, you have to send your information ahead of time because astrology is a science. It's not just something theoretical. They have to go through your birth chart. They have to analyze everything. They have to make sure like, you know, they're seeing what they're seeing and not just like spitting out anything to you. So what I did was I sent her an email ahead of time with my information. And I called her earlier today saying, hey, saying, hey, um, I see my information. Can I get a reading chart today? She said, yes, call her back in five minutes. I get her like 20. You know, I had to get ready for the camera, all that good stuff. So I'm at my homepage. I'm going to click advisors. As you see, it says psychic readings and all that. We're getting an astrology reading. Never had one. I always get like tarot readings. I always get like past life readings, ancestry readings. Ooh, I love those. I never got an astrology reading. So let's go ahead and see like what she could find legit from like my blueprint in life. So go down to astrology readings. You see all the advisors. So for my reading, for my advisor, I chose Madam Scarlet. So let's look at her bio real quick. Honest, straightforward. I do not sugarcoat and we'll get right to the issue. Find out what the stars have in store for you. Discover your strengths and weaknesses for mastery over the decisions that you face. I like that already. If you've been on my TikTok, you see how I communicate. It's honestly straightforward. No sugar, no sugar coating, no BS. I love that. I'm resonating with that. And that's who I want. So anyway, she's busy right now. She was like kind of getting prepared for my reading. So I'm going to go ahead and arrange a call. And I'm going back to my homepage to do that. But if you, you know, let's go ahead and show you how the website works. So they'll show the specialties, the skills and methods, languages and all. Her background, she has 20 plus years of astrology and tarot. If that's not the person I should have chose, tell me what I should have chose. Anyway, she's a master. She interprets dreams, y'all. I love dreams. I dream. I take my dreams seriously. Like, she's the one. Look at her. She's the one. She's available, so let's go ahead and call her. I get 12 minutes, y'all, with my $50. I get 12 minutes, so let's see how this goes. And it's going to call her. And how it works is they're going to call me. See, they're calling me. That's King's number. You requested to call with Madam Scarlet. To start your call, press 1. To decline, press 1. Before I get into my thoughts, I want to make it very, very clear that she did a phenomenal job with the short amount of time that she prepped for this. That lets me know that her 20 years of experience are actually, like, legit. Because most people... To get an astrology reading, they have to look at your chart for like hours ahead of time. At least prep like the night before. She did that on the spot within like 10 minutes. 10 minutes of prep time, she gave me all the information about my chart. Most readings take about 30 minutes, at least to an hour to kind of like, kind of give you the whole rundown of your chart. So for her to spit out all that information in under 12 minutes, that's phenomenal. That's impeccable. That shows that her skill is up there. So that was everything to me. So I felt like... 
she did tell me something that I kind of felt, but I'm glad she confirmed it. It came down to the relationship thing. She said that um, it's about the Aries. I track a lot of Aries and Taurus in my life. So not really necessarily Aries and Taurus, like the sun sign, but yes, I track a lot of Aries moons, a lot of uh, Taurus moons. So those two placements were spot on for me. Like always either too finicky, too much, too passion, too intense and it fizzles out or boring, mundane, and just, you know how Taurus is. They like they, they stuff and they be ready to settle down, but they just be like a little bit boring. She said that I have like a lot of restless energy. I have to keep going, keep moving and all that good stuff. That's why the Taurus moon don't work. Also the Taurus moon, again, with me being a Sagittarius moon, I need variety. I need variance. I'm restless. But with the Aries moons, they need that too. But then they like, it's like a, a battle. She did Vedic astrology, but in like tropical astrology, Aries falls in my fifth house. Moon to fifth house of synastry or synastry, whatever you want to call it. That's all about passion. It's all about flings. Anybody with those placements in that fifth house, it's going to be fun. It's going to be passion. You're going to feel a lot, but it's going to fizzle out and it's going to burn, crash and burn. So she's spot on about me attracting those two type of people in my life. Also, she talked about how I attract a lot of people who don't really want to settle down. Story of my life in 2021 and summer 2022. I'm like, I'm trying to talk to y'all and y'all really want nothing serious. And y'all getting on my nerves. Y'all dealing with this person, dealing with that person. Like, that was spot on about me. But when it came down to, she said, I need to wait a year for like settling down and, settling, and like settling for love. I'm feeling that now anyway because I am in a connection. He actually wants to settle down. She said something about earth signs. She said, most likely to settle down with an earth sign. If you didn't know, in tropical astrology, my um, seventh house, my relationship house, it shows in Taurus, but it's actually intercepted house. So it's in Gemini. I track a lot of like Taurian people. So if it actually was in Taurus, I have both those energies going on. Yes, I would attract a lot of like earth sign partners. And I'm actually talking to an earth sign guy right now, but I feel what she's saying. Like before she even said it, yes, it's true. I'm thinking, I want a year to myself, a year to like just do what I want to do, a year to be creative. Like I'm feeling really creative right now. She said I need to be like diving into my creativity, diving into um things that I can express myself. And that's so true. I'm feeling that right now. I'm feeling like I need to get back on TikTok. I need to get back on YouTube. I just want to create, create, create. And I have so much in the vault that I haven't edited to put out yet. So I'll focus on that. I don't know, focus on love. And also one thing I wanted her to say she said, I'm attracting a lot of partners that don't want to settle down. That might be, that might want polyamorous relationships or whatever. Polygamy. That's not the issue right now. The issue right now is he wants to settle down, but my Sagittarius energy ain't peat. It ain't nurture. It don't feel good. Like, where's my variety? Where's my fun? Where's the passion? I ain't got no passion at right now. This person, all they want to do is talk about love. I'm sorry, y'all in my personal business. Anyway, they want to talk about love. Oh, I miss you. I want to hang out with you. I'm just like, why we can't talk about how many stars we think are in the sky? Why can't we talk about, you know, how many moons we think there, there is on Earth? What would happen if, like, the sun never came back up? Just something simple, something silly. Like, I'm just not feeling that right now. I just want to be on my own. I just want to be a, a free elf. I just want to roam and just, like, go explore. Because she mentioned that, too, about exploring. Like, I like to, like, go different areas, travel different places. I want to go feed my soul. I want to like just fly free, be the fool in the tarot card. I just want to like roam free. Actually, I was being a little bit short-sighted because 2021 and some of like my life, like my last year in college, I dealt with people who wanted polygamy. Not in the sense of like, hey, they told me straight up, I want you and this person and I want both of y'all to mingle. They were putting me in those situations. Like one guy I was dealing with in St. Louis, oh, a whole lot of St. Louis BS. He kept dealing with his ex, dibbling and dabbling with his ex, and then dabbling with me. And then I was like, what's going on? And I found out later, I actually creep up on them. And I'm like, wow, they in our apartment, right where I stay and he stayed. He brought her to the apartment right outside, just walking like everything's freely. He wanted her and me. He know how to tell her about me. He know how to tell me about her. He wanted us both. He was never going to say nothing. That happened to me again in college, my last year, where a guy was saying he wanted me. But his ex kept calling. His ex kept like mingling and kept interfering. I'm like, why should he be interfering? He kept telling her that he loved her 
and that he's interested in me. So yes, polygamy came up in my life in that sense of the way. And yes, you guessed it, they were both cancer men. Cancer men cannot let go. They were trying to let go and move on at the same time. It don't work like that. So she was spot on about that. And I forgot that. So anyway, she spot on about all that. And I'm glad she gave me a time frame though, saying for like the next year, because your rant is going to be here for a while. At least for the next year, don't take nothing serious. And I'm like, I'm kind of feeling that right now. So I'm glad she gave me a date. What else I want to talk about? She talked about in my intense. That's given. Scorpio rise up. I'm always going to be intense. But I'm a Scorpio Venus too, baby. Venus too. And a Pluto. So like, intense is my middle name. Intense is my first and last name. Intense is all around my chart. All around my energy. Yes, I'm intense. Also, she was very, very much so spot on about me having conflict with like women in my life. And I've always like did better with like male friends. And I had strife for that too growing up. People saying like, oh, all you do is hang out with other people. All you do is get attention here. I can help that I'm fine. And I can help that I have a good vibe, good energy. You intimidate about that. It's because you don't feel like you're up to par. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But I do always have a lot of competition, a lot of animosity in female groups. But my two friends that I do like, we do be getting along good. So... It's hard for me to connect with women. So when I'm in like an environment with women, it's just be like, how is she going to act? Is she going to be this way? Is she going to be that way? Can I, is she going to be cool? Like, I be kind of a little bit on edge. She mentioned something about being anxious and having anxiety. That's me. If my energy ain't booming, anxious and like uppity and like bouncy, I'm not really like myself. That's why I only get on TikTok when I'm like feeling good. I be like, yeah, I feel like talking shit today. Oh, she talked about that too. About me being brutal. Me being honest, like me being so, I can be very masculine. I got big Sagittarius places, big Sagittarius energy. Yes, I'm very much so masculine. Capricorn is supposed to be feminine sign, but I feel like we give daddy energy too. I'm very much so masculine. I'm very much so like, shut the up. I definitely give tough love, but I can take it back. Another part I want to touch on is the fact that she said that I need to work on expressing my emotions and my longings. For the longest, I've had the hardest time speaking up for myself. Y'all might have seen me on TikTok and all that thinking like I'm outspoken. I am in some aspects, but for me to express my emotions and like how I feel and like what I'm actually wanting, what I'm actually needing from a connection from a person, it's really hard. Even if something as simple as, hey, can you help me bring in the groceries or can you help me uh, fix this thing? I'm a DIY queen, I'm, I'm doing myself. I can depend on me. It's hard for me to express my longings, to get my needs met. I like that she mentioned that. If she had more time, she could have dived into it, but like she mentioned that, that's really big for me. It's something I'm actively working on right now. Expressing my emotions as I feel them and not gaslighting my own emotions. Cause I would tell myself, I don't feel that way. I'm overreacting. If I could just express how I feel, I can get it out and like kind of get clarity that I need versus holding it and brooding and like getting angry all over again. Just holding on to so much hurt. Scorpio places, can't let go. Anyway. Something else I want to touch on too, she said Libra in my 12th house, I hide my affection. I'm dealing with that right now. I didn't realize, but I've been hurt because, you know, I've been holding and harboring a lot of things. But, you know, Libra's there, so doormat. I realized that I hide my affection because when I'm giving away freely, it was not received that well. So now I'm having a hard time feeling safe to be soft. Be feminine, be loving. Because when I was loving, it was too much. When I was soft, it was like, oh, she's weak. So I'm having a hard time connecting back to that soft space I used to be in. And people were just unworthy. I have to realize that I was young during those times. People aren't mature. People don't even know how to like deal with their own emotions. How can they deal with mine? And it's, ooh, I have evolved if I can say that right now. Because before I'd be like, so? So if I'm the one they can deal with it, wow, I've evolved. Back to the concept, I hide my affection and actively working towards that and I'm trying to get out of that. But you know, 12th house has to deal with like subconscious fears, things that, you know, people aren't, things that you um, don't really actively show people. People think I'm so affectionate, but that's only like a little piece of how affectionate I can be. That's not really the case. They don't know that I'm really holding back a whole lot because again, 12th house, house of secrets too. So, wow. For her to mention that and kind of catch that real quick, that takes a lot of learning. It takes a lot of astrology, a lot of reading to like learn more about the 12th house and be able to call it out spot on. Wow, that's crazy. The last thing I want to add on to this reading because I'm, you know, I wanted it back and I'm like, dang, she did mention that. That's crazy. I'm glad I got to record it. Anyway, 
She's talking about my parents might have doubted me, doubted my creative abilities when I was young. Did y'all know I wanted to be an actress? Nobody knows that. I wanted to be an actress first. I don't want to be what I am now. I don't want to do like all that other stuff I was doing, all that school I went through. I did not want to do that. I wanted to be an actress. I was going to try out for the Amanda show. They had like castings. I was people on Nickelodeon.com a lot. They had castings. I was like, Mom, I'm, I'm going to go out to California. I want to try out for the Amanda show. My mom was like, you can act. And I was like, <gasps> She's like, acting don't run our family. My mom said stuff like that. And I was like, Mom, I want to be a singer because I used to have a voice. I could hold a little tune when I choose to hold a tune. She's like, you can't sing. Singing don't run our family. I want to be a model. She said, you too hippie. You can't be a model. You got to be like bone thin. I was never able to express. I was never able to express my creative abilities the way I wanted to. I was always talked down on and I'm still breaking free from that now. But I was never nurture in that way now when it came to art too i want to mention this as well not even just like because it wasn't all bad you know parents do try don't make it seem like it was that bad i remember i used to get in trouble in school for something i, I still do to this day i used to get in trouble for school and they'd be like oh she's not doing work she's uh drawing she's always drawing during the class time like doodling and stuff like still to this day when i was in college i would doodling too if i'm in class and i got anxiety me drawing while they're talking helps me interpret information better. I don't know why, but it do. I have to move. I got restless energy. I got a lot of Virgo in like Sagittarian restless energy. I has to move. Anyway, my mom did bring home like a little art. What you call those things? Anyway, something where you hang up the art and I can like stand up and like paint and like do creative stuff. But the problem was I never want to do creative stuff at home. Creativity at the house wasn't where I felt inspired. I felt inspired when I was in an area when I was bored, when I needed to escape. At home, I didn't really need to escape and do art. So I wasn't nurtured in that aspect of like getting nurtured in the environment that I want to be nurtured in, that I needs to be nurtured in. And I didn't realize that until like I got older anyway, but the other things still stand true. I was always doubted about all the things I wanted to do. I never had that nurturing that I needed, but Breaking free, obviously, I be on TikTok, but I do kind of get back to that mode of like, oh, I don't feel nervous. this is gonna be enough. I doubt myself now because I grew up with so much doubt. But we breaking free, we soaring, we flying, I'm slamming. Anyway, back to the original video. So anyway, overall, I feel like she was really good for like the little bit of time I had. Now, if I could have paid more for like a more full reading, like at least 30 minutes, I feel like she could have dived deeper. Like I want to hear a little bit more because she was actually telling me things that I, needed to hear but yes getting back onto my creativity i'm gonna hold off on relationships because it's just not feeling right right now i'm feeling like i just want to again fly and the person i'm with is making me feel like i gotta be a snail crawl i don't know how to crawl years ago anyway i like it but i love astrology i love tarot i love all this esoteric stuff so in my eyes keen is legit because she came out of nowhere I just found her online. I like her bio. Something's like short and sweet. And she was. She was getting straight to the point. She's like, yeah, this is and that. Like, she was definitely who she said she was. She definitely was legit. So with that being said, I feel like Keen is approved. Keen is legit. And Keen is worth the money and the time and the experience. So thumbs up for me. I didn't know it was on a spot like that. I thought you had to plan it the old school way. If you find a person online, you got to be like, okay, cool. You're getting like their long queue of like maybe two weeks from now. Maybe a month from now. That was on the spot. I love that. And all right, you guys, that concludes my thoughts and opinions on my reading and whether I think Keen is legit or not. As you see, I do think it's legit. So with that being said, use my link in my bio. Get your first 10 minutes for $1.99. Go longer if you choose to or not, but you get your first 10 minutes for $1.99. It saves you up to $99 in savings. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy reading. I hope you guys enjoy Keen like I'm enjoying Keen. And you guys have a wonderful and blessed night. Thank you and see you on the next video.